Hi, I'm Bob, and today we're going to weave a basket, and we're going to do the first part of the basket, which is weaving the base. And the end result basket that we're going to weave is this. It's a little larger than what I originally thought we were going to weave, but I scaled up and used a, I'm going to be using a number five spoke material and number three to keep it very simple so you only need two kinds of reed, number five round reed and number three round reed. Um, it's a round reed basket and it ended up to be a checkerboard pattern, but it could just easily be a stripe and you'll find that out as, as we weave along. So the two kinds of reed we're going to be using are number five. I don't know if you can see that, number five reed. And I'm going to use a number three round reed. Uh, I just have this dark sort of khaki green color to be a complementary color to the base as we weave the base so that you can easily see the difference between the spokes and the weavers. Uh, this is round reed, it's rattan, and it's imported. And you can go to any um, reed supply online store like um, basketmakerscatalog.com and order the reed by a pound and you can dye it yourself using writ dye or you weave it naturally, either way. Uh, Rit dye is probably the simplest way to make colors. And then I'm gonna be using a cutter, cutter tool. It's like a sort of a wire cutter, but it's for basket reed. And in, and in the interim, you could use um, just a sort of a wire cutter clipper or a really sharp short scissor. And then a pinching tool, which is like a beading tool. These are round tips. And if you clip a piece of reed on the end, on the very, very end using the little end, it cuts it. If you use the wider part of the uh, thing, it crimps it and then eventually you can bend it if, if it's wet. You want to weave with your reed wet all the time. I have a bucket of water here to my right and I have a spray bottle here and I have a towel. So those are the pieces of equipment. Now to get started with this base, what I've done is I've cut uh, 16 spokes 30 inches long, 30 inches long, 16 spokes, and I coiled them up and soaked them in water for about 20 minutes. Then I kind of straightened them out and used my hands to get them as straight as I could. And then I tied rubber bands to them and left them overnight. And what happens is it relaxes the reed and then they dry in place and they're nice and straight. So, uh, it's a great way to get started. And I think those are all the initial things I wanted to tell you about. And so let's get started and weave the base. So to begin with the base, <clears throat> we're gonna take four spokes and lay it vertically, four spokes across, and then across again and across again so you get 16 spokes laid out in the star pattern and you want to measure to make sure that you're hitting the midpoint of the 30 inches right in the center. So from the center out to the point should be 15 inches. Then we're going to start to weave. I'm going to take a weaver, a wet weaver. I've soaked it for about 10 minutes, very, very flexible, and leave a tail about six inches. I'm left-handed so I'm going to weave around counterclockwise, but if you're right-handed, you just weave clockwise. And you're gonna lay the, um, and by the way, I put a spoke weight or a heavy weight just on a few of the ends here to hold it still for a few minutes while I get started. You don't have to do that, but it helps. So I'm gonna lay this tail on the uppermost group of spokes here. This is the uppermost group. And then I'm going to go under the next group of spokes and I'm going to weave over, under, over, under groups of four spokes as if each group of four was one spoke. And you want to make sure you kind of hold them down and keep them in place while you're getting your first couple of wraps. Once you get the first wrap in, 
it should look like this. And you want to pull the tail one way and pull the main part of the weaver the other way and just pull until you get it as snug as you can and get that these holes, these little spaces here that are on either side, these little gaps. You want to get it as tight as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you want to wrap it one more time around. Get this weaver done one more time around in the same, same way that you did the other, so it's overlapped. And then really pull snug tight and you get some traction. Until it's about like that. And then this little tail, we're gonna back weave and fill these holes. So just leave that alone for now. And then take your weaver and keep on doing two more wraps, going over under these groups of spokes until you have four wraps. Once you have four wraps successfully done, you go around where you started, where the uh, little tail overlaps these four spokes, and you wanna take your weaver and go under the first two of those spokes and then pass it through behind the other two spokes, just like that, because you're gonna be going over the next group of four spokes, kind of switching direction. So instead of going under this group, with the four previous wraps, now you're gonna go over and do four wraps that way. So you wanna hold your spokes sort of so that they all go on a um, really, really snug and tight like that, so they're on a level playing field, um, level them out so they don't stick up or go back. You wanna push them with your fingers as you're going around, so the ones that wanna pop up, you gently push down as you're wrapping underneath. And you do that, and you do four wraps of that. And now that you have four wraps in that second set of um, wraps, when you come back around to where those spokes, you divided the spokes on the first set, put them up the tree, you wanna go behind two spokes and in front of two spokes to bring your weaver up to the front. Then, for a moment, um, we want to back weave this little tail and kind of get it out of the way so give it a good spray and then take your tail and start weaving in and out back through right along the previous the um, set of four wraps just in and out those little spaces so it's going to go in and out of these little spaces here and just back weave it through all the way around and then leave it to the back and we'll take care of that tail later but you just want to go all the way around once. Just like this. And you want to make sure these stay snug and line up nice and close to the previous row of weaving. And just go as far as you can. And then leave the tail to the back. And we'll, we'll tuck that tail in later. But now what we're going to do is start what we call Japanese weaving. And Japanese weaving means over two, under one. So we're gonna do that all the way around the rest of the base, over two and under one. So I've got my weaver over these two spokes, and I'm gonna take the weaver to the back and hold it down. And I'm gonna be, the, this exercise is really about moving your spokes laterally, uh, uh, not forward and back, but laterally and splitting them up further and further so they're all equidistant from each other. And the first couple rows are a little tough. You're gonna go behind one weaver, one spoke, excuse me, and up to the front, and then over the next set of spokes, and then to the back, and then bring it up to the front behind the one, so it's over two under one, up to the front, and then when you get to the front, just gently nudge the two spokes aside that you're gonna go over and back, over, and put it back. And then take your next spoke and move it aside so you can go under one, because you wanna go under one. So over two, under one, you want the weaving to stay very, very close in, very, very snug. You don't wanna pull your spokes forward and back, hold them level, 
and it's the weaver that goes over to and down and back. So the weaver goes over to and down and back and you hold it with your finger. And then you, as you gently nudge the spoke aside, hold the weaver and bring it up and forward under one. Over two, under one. And just gently work your way around. And you'll find that as you go around one row and then to the next, it'll go over two, under one in a different place. You should not be going over two and under one once you go around once over the same sets of spokes that way. If you do, you might have miscounted and you should go recheck. So do over two, under one for a couple of wraps, and then we'll just check our work. So I've woven a few rows of the base weaving, and this is where I am. And right about now or sometime soon, you're probably thinking, hey, what happens when I run out of my weaver, and how do I add a new weaver? So what you do is when you go um, behind one with the end of your old weaver, and you go over to and in, and this is just gonna be a simple overlap join. You've gone over to and in, so the, the little tail is on the inside. You're gonna insert a new weaver from the front, just past that spoke, so they overlap behind that spoke. I don't know if you can see that. They overlap behind that spoke where you go under one, and you hold it down behind with your fingers and take this new weaver and go over two and behind one and keep on weaving. You're just weaving it right in, right along that same path. And where those two little ends overlapped in the back, those just stay there for the time being. And you're gonna come along later and clip them late, much later on once you've woven many, many rows past it. And the next row you weave around is gonna hold it in really, really tight. So all it is is just a simple overlap join behind, just crisscrossing the, uh, the weavers behind the spoke that you go under one. And just keep on weaving over two under one. You can see I'm separating my spokes, gently nudging them left and right, side to side as I go along. And the motion is always over two. It's over two spokes and under one. And I take the over two, very wet weaver, keep it wet, over two, and behind and down, hold it down with your finger and then bring it behind one and up and forward. And when you bring it forward, if you hold your spokes with your fingers and give it a slight nudge, it picks up the slack and closes in those little gaps and makes it very tight weaving. Hold it with your finger, go over two and behind one and back. Hold it with your finger back there, bring it back behind one and down and then give it a little bit of a cinch. So you just keep on doing that, making it nice and snug. And then um, before you know it, and by the way, you're gonna have a slight dome. This is the inside of the basket that we're looking at. And so the spokes eventually are gonna bend up towards this. And you want it to sit flat on the table so it'll slightly dome. Don't make it too flat. Make sure it curves slightly outward. You don't want this completely flat. And as you tighten these, um, as you go over two and under one and then back. Before you go over two, if you push gently on your thumb with the spokes, making that tight and then go back, it will gently dome kind of by itself, curve. So once you weave the base out to six inches of diameter, six inches across, uh, you want to uh, end the last weaver by going over two and back. And then when I flip this over, I'm going to, where it goes um, over two and back, that far side spoke that it hits, that's just where it goes in. That's the space that you wanna open up with your pinching tool. And I'm gonna open up this space right here because I'm gonna tuck this in, the end in, and I'm gonna pinch it just where it goes in to crimp it, and past it I'm gonna clip that off, and I'm gonna bend it a little elbow and insert it into the sp spoke space and slide it right in. So that takes care of the end. 
So it looks nice and neat. Now on the back, wherever, leave the little tail for a moment. Don't do anything with the tail. But these other overlapping ends here, we just want to cut those off carefully using your cutting tool. And you want to go and cut them in the angle that it's going and cut it just so that your tool lays flush and level with the top of the spoke. And so I cut all the ones going this way and then I flip the basket over and cut all the ones going the other way. You don't want to cut it so, you don't want to lift it and cut it aggressively so it pulls back through the spoke. You want to cut it just parallel and on top of the spoke it's going over just so it lays flush. Now the tail, what I do is first of all, I, on the tail I cut um, a really sharp little point on the end of the tail. So it's got a, a point. Then I spray it really, really well. I want it to be very, very wet because I'm going to feed it through. I'm going to feed it through this, this group of spokes that it's right next to. It's going to, I'm going to bend it. I, I'm, eventually I'm going to bend it, but I'm just going to feed it through there. And I'm going to do that by taking my crimping tool and putting it under, very carefully, under this group of spokes and opening up space and using it as a, um, as a way to lift that group of spokes. Then I'm going to take this little end and put it in there under, just like this, just under alongside my crimping tool, get it under that group of spokes so it looks like this, and then I'm just going to gently pull this through, and it can be tough, but pull it through. Oh, gosh, that was a tough one. So it's going to pull through like that and just lay nice and flush. Um, just want to make sure it doesn't bubble up from the back. And then once I got that, I'm going to lift my little tail up here and just cut, cut off the end. And it looks nice and neat off from the back. So that is really the base. But now I really need, I need to soak this very, very well. And what I'm trying to do is soak these spokes where they come out of the weaving because I'm going to crimp them and then bend them up towards the domed part. If the dome is really, really too curved, you can always put it on the top of the table and flatten it down a little bit, but you want it to be just slightly curved like this. So I'm going to put this in my water basin and set a water bottle on it and hold it down and make sure it stays really in the water for a good period of time, I would say at least 15 minutes. So now that your spokes have soaked for a long time, you want to take them out of the water, drain it, and then what we want to do is pinch the spokes using the widest part of the pinching tool and go in very carefully on each spoke like this and just crimp it on the widest part very carefully and crimp right where it's coming out of the weaving. because you're going to bend these spokes up against their natural curve in, a, in an actual bend. It's called upsetting the spokes. So the, the more gradual you do, you move when you're bending the spokes up, the wetter they are, the better. Once they're all crimped, 
you want to just very carefully bend a few at a time up. I take three or four at a time and just slowly bend them up and gather them in the middle. If you start to hear a little bit of cracking, it means spray it again with water and just go slow. And once you get all the spokes up, I like to uh, let them sort of relax in an upright position. So what I'm going to do is just tie them together with a rubber band and let them sit for a while that way before I start to weave the side of the base. So the bottom of your base looks nice and neat and tight and the spokes have been upset and uh, it sits nice and flat on the surface of the table here and we're now ready to weave the side of the base. A couple of tips um, when you were weaving the base, uh, I don't know if it was obvious, but the, long, the longer flexible weavers you have for the base weaving, the better, because then you have less, less places where you have to add new weavers. And keep everything wet. If you feel anything start to dry out, either dip it back in your bucket of water or use your spray bottle and spray it down. But uh, you don't want it so soaking wet that you're working in a puddle, but you want it to be well dampened as you're weaving. So that's it, and we're ready to weave the sides of the basket.